Inside WordPress, you're gonna find two different ways of organizing content, tags and categories, but when do you use one over the other? Let's talk about this. Hi everyone, it's Tony, and today we're gonna to be taking a deep dive into how to properly use tags and categories on WordPress. If you get this right, it can make a huge difference on how SEO friendly your website ends up being. Now, if you are just starting out your website, this video is going to be great because you're going to be learning how to properly set up and structure your website from, uh, from the very beginning. And if you've already built your website, you're still going to want to stick around because a lot of what I'm going to be teaching can easily be adjusted to pre-built on pre-built websites as well. So with that said, Arno, let's, let's get started. Okay, first things first, let's quickly analyze what categories and tags are used for. Both tags and categories share the same exact use case on WordPress. Their purpose is to essentially allow you to group and organize content that is about the same topic. In fact, you can click on a category or a tag on the front end of your WordPress website and you will see how WordPress automatically redirects you to something that they call an archive page. An archive page, which I'm, I'm going to be referring to as a, as a category page, organizes content about a given topic. And WordPress creates archive pages for both categories and tags. For example, if you have a fitness blog, you may have a category on your WordPress website named diet. You could have another one named gear, and you may have one that's about exercises. And what's so cool about categories is that you can take them even further. For example, if we continue to work off of the idea of running a fitness blog, exercises might still be a little bit of a, of a broad topic, right? I mean, think about it. You may have content that deals with exercising your, your upper body. You may have content that focuses on your lower body. You may have content that deals with your core, which is why WordPress allows us to have nested categories, which are also commonly known as just simply subcategories. Subcategories, just like categories and tags, also get their own category page. And by the way, with Thrive Theme Builder, you can customize the, the look, the feel, the design, the content of your category pages to make sure that they have been properly optimized for SEO. The default page that WordPress creates for you for your category pages simply consists of a, of a list of blog posts that have been listed under the category. If you were to roll along with this default page template, it's gonna be very hard for you to rank these pages because they, they wouldn't have any meaningful keywords on them. And also just you know the, the structure and value of the page is just not very good. So I recently did a video on SEO basics for WordPress users that talks a little bit more about how to use category pages to design a silo architecture website and properly optimize it for SEO. So there's a video card popping up right now on screen in case you wanna check out that video. A common question that often arises on new users is how many categories should I have on my website? And the answer, to be honest, depends. For the majority of users, I'd say that there's no need to have many categories. If you struggle to be able to list at least 10 blog posts under a category, that probably means that you shouldn't have created a category in the first place. You don't want to have what we like to call orphan categories, where you only have three posts underneath your category. That, that just defeats the purpose of even having a category in the first place. A good example of a website that understands this really well is, actually most newspapers get this right. You see, most newspapers in the US don't have a category on their websites about news for each country in the world, mainly because they don't cover relevant news about every country in the world on a daily basis, right? Instead, what they do is they have a category on their website named something along the lines of international where they list relevant news happening outside the US. Okay, now we've covered categories, which allows us to organize content by topics. And we've also talked about nested categories, which allows us to break up categories into smaller topics. Now, let's talk about tags. Tags are very simple to understand. They're another way of organizing content on your website. The main difference between tags and categories is that tags don't play any kind of role on helping you rank content on search engines. They also don't, they don't talk to search engines to let them know what your content pieces are about. Tags are just for you and your use only. In fact, I almost never, I could go even further and say never display tags in the front end of my website. I don't let visitors interact with my tags. Tags are just a way for me to organize where do I show specific pieces of content on my website. Let me just give you an example that may bring a little bit of more clarity to how tags work. 
Say that you're building a newspaper type website like, like the New York Times. You will probably want a content piece in the hero section of your website, right? This, this is your trend and content piece of the day, right at the very top. Well, how do you tell WordPress which content piece should get displayed there? Well, using tags. You could have a tag named trending. And well, if you're using Thrive Architect to build your website, um, you know, just be as simple as telling Thrive Architect, hey, I want you to display here the most recent content piece that has the tag, the, you know, the tag trending. As for how many tags you should be creating, it's really up to you, depending on how big of a website you're building. You may need a handful of tags to organize content, or you may need dozens of them. If you're building the New York Times, you're probably gonna be making use of hundreds of them. All right, hopefully that addresses your questions as to how to properly use tags and categories on WordPress. Remember that there is a link in the description box down below that you can click on if you wanna grab Thrive Theme Builder. It will allow you to create your own category pages however you wish without writing a single line of code, which is a must do if you want to be ranking open Google. You really wanna make sure you optimize those, those category pages as much as you possibly can. And yeah, I'm down in the comment section below if you got any, any questions. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.